welcome back to the Dallas Arts Organization International Podcast. My guest today is Dallas Master Zhou Zhuan Yun. Master Zhou's parents sent him at age 13 to Wudong Mountain, where he was first a student and later an instructor in Tai Chi, Kung Fu, and Qigong. He was accepted into the 24th generation of the Wudong Longmen Pai lineage, and at age 16, he took the vows to become a Dallas monk. Master Zhou belongs to the Orthodox Unity sect of Taoism and is a formally recognized disciple of Master Li Guangfu, chairman of the Chinese Taoist Association. Today, he resides in the United States, where he teaches martial arts and Taoism from his retreat center, Zhuenju, in Francistown, New Hampshire. Hi, Master Zhou Shifu. Hi. Good to see you. I guess I should also mention at the beginning of the interview that you are my teacher so that people <laughs> know that. Okay, it's, it's no, 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 no problem. Don't, don't everything worry about it. <laughs> so you have a really interesting story, life story. Um, and and um, could you talk a little bit about how you first became involved in martial arts and Taoism? Um, so I want to say every master, everyone uh, have the different story and everyone have the interesting story. Just say like my thought story lived different and uh, special because uh, uh, I have a lot of different, uh, how to say, uh, my environment is different. Like before where I grew up, everything is very different uh, than the United States or like the first country, second country, like um, yeah, either Europe, all different. And the people, that's why the people interesting about uh, you know, it's kind of like the story. Um, um, I want to say, um, just like you said, my parents sent me, went to um, Wudang when I was 13 years old. Um, because as in China, the situation is different. Um, if the, they have kids, um, if the kids' school is very, very good in school, um, they're happy. They don't really think about because this can have a very good, uh, in a, how to say, uh, have a good future, mm. you know. And so, if you know good about the school, uh, then let's think about okay, since the kids do to, um, military of a soldier or sent to some like a, a kung fu school, then maybe like uh, have a good life of future. Um, so. I was 13 years old. That's why I stopped the school. Um, have like some reason. Of course, I'm not really like a good about the school. I said for now the people say, okay, because I'm naughty. Eh, a little bit, you know, we say <laughs> I'm naughty. <laughs> um then I stopped the school, like my parents sent me, went to Wood. Um it's for my parents, it's another it's not like a goal, it's a kind of like a uh, important for my father to learn Kung Fu and I can come back to protect my family. Yeah. Uh, because like I want to say like 25 years ago, there was a lot of violence uh, in uh, uh, to Royal, uh, like, uh, uh, fam uh, like China, in the, before in China, 25 years ago in China, have a lot of violence. And uh, you know, the fighting with the neighbors was very, very common. It's normal things, I'm fighting a lot. So it's my parents, why? Like my father, so okay, I have to send you go to Kung Fu school, come back, like protect a family. That's why I am become a martial arts, like, a, you know, learn the martial arts, become a martial arts teacher, or because it's for my uh, service, for my life. Right. I have to do working hard. So what was your reaction when your parents told you that, that you were going to Wudong Mountain to study Kung Fu as a 13-year-old boy? Is that something? Uh, <laughs> this is very difficult. Um, I remember my mother is quite a lot, you know, yeah. 13 years old, they just like a kid. Right. Um, for my father, I, they feeling it's okay because they know it's hard, also hard for my father, but it's for my future. And then I went to I'm learning some skills for future. Um, for me, I'm just a kid. I don't understand anything. I just okay, it's cool, martial arts. You know, we all influenced from the kung fu movie, like a uh, uh, like a uh, Bruce Lee, Jack Chan, and uh, uh, Jet Li. All all influenced. Oh, it's cool. Not have any idea. Yeah. You know, my parents just sent me there. Okay, I accept that. 
So what were, what were your first days like there at Wudong? What was the environment like? Yeah, it's like uh for me, uh so like a movie, you know, went to the Wudong, the mountain, the temple, everything. You never know. It's for me, it's kind of like a feeling like a in other world. Yeah. Wow, the temple, everything's so beautiful. And the priest wearing the clothes, architect, everything's different. What I feel like in the movie. Uh, I said, oh, I want to be that. Uh, so cool. Um, of course, then after I start to practice, it's, it's totally different. Uh, um, I really like it. And it's just like uh, the culture, you know, I blew my mind. I was before 13 years old either and never went to my city and just in a small village. Uh, it's like a totally different. I want to say that. Yeah. So what were your what was your day-to-day -day training like there? So it's difficult for me. I want to talk about a little bit back uh, for my first day. You know, the first day, I just don't know. Everybody practice kick, so active, so cool. And then the practice of form is okay, I want to do it, I do it. Like a second day, your body started to pain. The yeah. third day, the pinball rolled like a one week. Every day, so pain. Like, you know, every day, this is the morning. I remember around like a 6 30 or something like that. You know, the teacher, like, just have a stick. Go to the each room. We all, the, each room will have around like a, some room will have around like eight students. Some room will have 12 students, a uh, small room. We have the bunk bed, you yeah. know. They just, we all the room will have a door. The teacher just uses the stick, the bum, 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 very noisy. get up, get up, go practice. Then you just like, a, for me, it's just like a party. You know, okay, go, 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 quick, 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 go. Then go outside, go bathroom, and then um, uh, just, you know, we have the, like a Republic, like a, Bathroom and a lot of people use the here the one bathroom. Yeah. Uh, sometimes have the long leg. Wherever we go, bathroom. I think I'll say it's a stretch, go practice. So the teacher say, or the coach say, go kick, kick, do that, do this. So you just follow. You don't have any idea, you just follow. You know, after that, breakfast, then practice, after lunch, then, you know, like a beginning the days. Like a few days, I don't know. I said, okay, I still have energy. I don't want to take a nap. Then later, just a few days later, you can handle it. You have to take a nap yeah. because it's very, very tired. Then like a nap around two hours, three hours. Sometimes you don't know, just like fall asleep. Then after uh, uh, like around like 5 p.m., then everybody get up, you know, dinner. We kind of like around the dinner, like 5 p.m. after the dinner. Then like a one hour break, then practice again. Something like a, um, then even you run at nine um, p.m. Then uh, turn off the light. Yeah, um, just say every day like that. You just like not have uh, any idea, so have um, think about another things or do other things. Just uh, for me, just practice eat bathroom. Practice eat bathroom. Just three things. Yeah. You know, I want to say like more more harder than. In the military, yeah. As a so you because in yeah. you know you, you can talk conversation like a beginning of like in the school the first year it's all like that, you know. Then later after like one year, then we go back. Oh, we have the time because we're used to be a life like that. So then I think oh the food is not good because you still to think about the food. Because before you never no because you're all the time hungry. You practice a lot. It's like in the school. Yeah. Yeah. So in those first few days, did you ever did it ever cross your mind to try to run away? Um uh, I'm not. It's a lot of kids, a lot of students did. Yeah. But for me it's difficult. I know uh my parents. Yeah. I pay a lot of money. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of because uh, and my family is poor in the village, it's not poor. My parents borrow money from the relatives. Uh, if I go back, I don't know how to do it. No yeah. fees to my parents. Yeah. Then my parents are always like uh, first like uh, two weeks, then uh, write a letter to me. You have to work hard, you have to blah, 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 tell me. So you just, okay, I have to do it. Yeah. yeah.
So what was your first art that you studied there? Were you just studying like Kung Fu, like hard style Kung Fu? Or, or did you start with Tai Chi and things like that right away also? Uh, we, uh, you know, Wudang Kung Fu School, Darren, I was there. No, maybe different. They have a different classes. Uh, some like a senior, some student. They want to practice Tai Chi or Qigong just for half. They don't want to learn martial arts. For us, it's different. We are kind of a martial arts class. Yeah. Uh, every day we have to practice Kung Fu and martial arts. Um, um, it's during this time in the Kung Fu school, Tai Chi not important. The Kung Fu, martial arts, is important. So something that I wanted to ask you about, which we, you and I have talked about a little bit, but there's kind of a misconception um, in the West about martial arts from Wudong, because uh, some people don't understand that during the Cultural Revolution, there was no nothing really going on martial arts at, at Wudong. Could you talk a little bit about how after the Cultural Revolution, there was groups of teachers from all over the country that came to Wudong to try to like rebuild these arts? Um. Yes. Um. Um, in Buddha martial arts, sometimes the people uh then talk about the how to say talk about the uh uh we in, inherit inherit yeah, yeah. inherit inherit um in Buddha martial arts everyone know um the cultural revolution and um, actually like uh uh and uh, how to the turmoil. Turmoil uh, in the later Qing dynasty in China and the Cultural Revolution. That's why in we say the Wudang, the martial arts, is like uh, we say uh, like broken. Like uh, during this time, nobody like uh, uh, you know a Cultural Revolution. All the priests have to go uh, back home. Every you know you can't stay in the Wudang mountain. Just right. like a few older priests, they don't have uh, any ability for survive. You know, whatever give the land or not give the land uh, for, for for life. So then just like a few priests, the oldest priest that can stay in the temple. Um after like uh, 1980s, uh how to say we say in China opened up again. Yeah. Um in China was one to like uh, restoring uh, the cultures. Yeah. The Wuda Mountain is also beginning to restore the religion beliefs. Yeah. It's all same. In the Wudang Kung Fu, kind of like a re, how to say, uh, representative, like representative uh, of the Wudang culture. It's like a import, important. Um, it's a way just like the local government of the Wudang Mountain, like beginning, beginner, then they begin to invite the, the priest or the monk who know Wudang. Does the priest culture or does the uh, martial arts or whatever? If you know that, the invited went to Wuda, then teach the younger priest. That's why a lot of people talk about the Guo Gao Yi and the Zhu Cheng De. Mm. It's like a Guo Gao Yi as a priest, also from Henan province, like my province, the same. Right. They practice Tai Chi, a different Tai Chi. Uh, so Zhu Cheng De is very good about the Qigong, they all from another temple. Or like um, somewhere, they invited to come back to Wuda to start to teach that. Um, yeah, after that is you know um, the martial arts start to like a uh, business, you know, can make money. Yeah. And a lot of different people went to Wuda start to open a kung fu school. Uh, it's a little bit trick. Like it's a lot of uh, people from Shaolin, <laughs> from Shaolin because Shaolin has too much kung fu school and too much competition. I right. heard little business. Then I went to Wuda, like a hire some, like a master or okay, some some one know Wuda martial arts. Okay, come to teach my student. Then I start to teaching Wuda kung fu, and like a lot of people also from like a sport school. Then okay, they learning you know they usually they kind of like a, a teacher or coach in a sport school teacher them we sell the new martial arts. They also went to school or Wuda, also went to Wuda, open school, then start to uh, teach in the Wuda Kung Fu. As for me, as a, what is Wuda Kung Fu meaning? As a lot of people, they don't care. They went to Wuda, if they see the people practice Kung Fu there, that's whatever. 
But, oh, it's a Wutang Kung Fu because from a Wutang. Right. Uh, you know, if someone a little bit new or know the martial arts, they think they know that it's an internal martial arts, as a Xing Yi, Ba Gua Tai Ji. You have to practice your internal energy. So, of course, for now, it's nobody cares. It's everything is business. Whatever the arts is good for people. So we know, you know, no complain about that. It's whatever is good for people. Whatever you want to work on or you go to some school, it's better than you stay home. You know, we say like a couch potato. Better than be a couch potato. Yeah. Better than your kids just play the phone. If, yeah. That's my opinion. Yeah. So, um, I've learned Xing Yi from you, and and I've heard you say that Xing Yi is one of your favorite arts. Um, can you talk about why that uh, appealed to you? What is it that you uh, like in Xing Yi? Uh, Xing Yi, uh, I want to say it's more practice your strength, and the internal energy is very, very powerful. Uh, if younger people, I believe all the younger people who practice martial arts, if you practice uh, the internal arts, you will love the internal arts, most like Xing Yi. Yeah. Uh, we can see the Shaolin Kung Fu is just a muscle, always a very, very hard. You like, uh, how to say, uh, you have to practice a very good muscle, very hard, it's a very strong, you know, we call it external Kung Fu, always a very, very strong muscle. They have, don't have a soft, okay, of course, know that they change something a little bit. Uh, you know, Tai Chi, just like a too soft. You know, of course, for uh, if someone practice Tai Chi for health, for something is very, very good. Okay, uh, for balance, it's very good. But the Xing Yi is more for the younger people, it's more for fighting. Uh, they have a soft and they have a like how fast, how strong. Uh, all the Xing Yi for me is can show the power and the feeling the power. So that's why I like Xing Yi is very much, uh, I went to say either the 20 years ago, 30 years ago, either not, I love Xing Yi. You can feel it, you can soft. Then when you use the movement, the power like a boom, like an explosion. You look at the soft, if you use it, or you want to start to practice, you look like a tiger. Look at, uh, how to say, usually a tiger, we can walk. I uh, can see the tiger or walk like so soft. And as I start to talk or hunting, the very, very strong scared. I want to explain the Xing Yi, something like that. Yeah. So, some people say that if you study external martial arts and you want to start studying internal martial arts, that it's better to start with Xing Yi first before you do Bagua or Tai Chi because of that reason. Do you agree with that? Uh, I say it's different style. Uh, it's total different style. Um, but uh, uh, for me, um, you can practice together. It's fun. <laughs> okay, that's for me. Uh, um, um, for uh, I think it's like uh, if someone want to start uh start to learn the martial arts, uh, most younger people, uh, you have to feel the power. Then you turn the power to the soft, you right. more understand your body. And if you start the soft later, to start to feeling the power and half of the power is a little bit difficult. Not like a difficult, need more time. We say if you practice martial arts first, as you jing gu pi, as you stress, make you strong outside, then inside. But the xing yi is beginning of a uh, beginning, uh, like um, how to say, if you practice the xing yi, the beginning. It's the outside, the muscles is also is important too. Then you turn into internal. Yeah, then practice internal. So you you started it when you were 13 years old, and then at 16 you started your, I guess, your religious studies, um, formal religious studies. Could you talk about why you did that and, and what that was like? Um the religion is, uh, I want to say the religion is totally different than the martial arts school. Wow. Um, because in the martial arts school, whatever, <laughs> I have to work hard. And um, uh, so why I'm, I'm beginning to be a religion, why I'm going to temple, be a priest. Uh, the first thing is about, um, how to say, I really like the religion culture. 
uh, all the Chinese culture or say the internal culture is kind of like a part of the religion. If you try to, like a philosophy, if you really uh, if you really got the religion part, you can more understand what you practice. Uh, it's well, I want to say the religion is deeply the culture of Chinese culture, something like that. Um, it's not things about money, you know, in Kung Fu school, wherever you still have to pay money and then not make money. And in the temple, you don't need to pay anything. You know, you have food, you can practice what you want. Uh, also, the temple is kind of like a university, for my opinion. Uh, they have um, not all of the priests. It's a lot of priests, they're kind of like a master. They all have their special skills. Like someone very good about the herbalist, how, you know, herbalist, like something like, a, you know, Chinese medicine. Someone very good about the acupuncture and the same one, uh, some priest very good about the fortune tone. Some one, some priest very good about the feng shui and the same um, master very good about the philosophy or someone very good about the internal alchemy or like a lot of different things. So in the, all the priests, if you want to be their student, if you live in the temple, if you, the master like you, you just thought, okay, can I be your disabled? It's no problem with this. Okay, no problem. What do you want to learn? They're always very kindly to teach you. This is the temple. Mm, why I like it. And you know, always the priest, uh, you know, I was in Kung Fu school. The Kung Fu school very close to the temple. Oh, I went to the temple, the priest, oh, you're hungry, you know, give some like a fruit. We have a lot of fruit in the temple because the someone bring the fruit for the God, <laughs> for the God. So they always say, oh, do you want to do that? Chatting with you. It's very, very nice, very, very kind. Yeah, that's why I want to be a priest. And I like being in the temple. Also the people, you know, later, all the priests always like, if you have time, I will chat in, talk, like a community. The community is very, very warm, very, very nice. Of, of course, sometimes have politics, but you always can find the same one, like uh, you interesting, or they interesting you, or something can together. You know, always after dinner, you know, the data we have to work, of course, like a different temple, different role. Some temple working just working like uh, six hours. Some temple working eight hours. Some temple maybe working ten hours. You still have time, you know, with the priest, not the priest, or the priest travel from another temple. You know, come to visit you. You can have a tea, and then always talking about a lot of things. It's very very interesting things, you know, in the temple. Yeah. So. You know, you mentioned that um, different people that became priests would concentrate on different things like internal alchemy or divination. What what did you uh, what did you concentrate on during your studies there? Did you pick one specific subject that you try to specialize in? Mm, I was uh, in the temple because uh, the temple is important to have to chanting, have to chanting, chanting, like the prayer things. Uh, we have to like all the youngest, uh, all the younger priests who begin to be a priest, you have to learn that. Mm -hmm. We have the book, you have to be chanting because the chanting can, in the book is not about just God. They have yeah. a lot of philosophy, a lot of skills, a lot of things. If you are still to learn, just like you have to learn that basic things. You have to know something like uh, about the Taoism culture. It's not just your master teacher, you have to learn by yourself. That's why we chanting with the book. Um, Second, for me, I'm very into, uh, interesting about the fortune teller. You know, as for me, it's so cool that people, someone walk in, they look at the face, they know what happened to that guy. It's the next step, you know. Uh, also, uh, that someone, of, of course, not think that they make very, very good money. <laughs> very, very good money. Yeah. Mm. That either they do the yi jing, like, oh, like, just like a half hour, they make like a few hundred. You know, we say around the fifty dollars, sixty dollar, uh, thirty years or forty years ago in China, it's a lot of money. It's yeah. a lot, a lot of money, like a forty to sixty dollars or fifty. Like a, sometimes the, some people they can like a hundred dollars just half an hour. You know, at the hey, good master. Um, it's very cool. Uh, you know, uh, the people come to in, they find you. It's so, 
uh, you know, always the people very respect her. This kind of master so respect, but this kind of priest who have a very special skill. We want to have the same respect. No. That's why I said, okay, I want to learn the fortune telling, like Yi Jing, something like that. I did. It's, it's very good. Also, they have a lot of philosophy, always have a lot of things. I like, I focus on that part, Chen Ting, also internal alchemy. Uh, like internal alchemy, always the priest. You know, I was a, be a wandering priest, you know that. Uh, traveling a lot, a lot of place, find a different master. We are after food, like after dinner or either after lunch. Sometimes we just sitting together, talking about a lot of things, either internal alchemy, everything. Then sometimes your master, of course, the practice will be different. You have to talk with your master. Okay, then you have a real master teacher, you show you what part you have to uh, be careful, what part you have to, you know, um, through. Um, then we have to have a master. Or oh, just want to like that. It's the, in the temple. It's really, really, uh, I, for me, I, I'm joyful or what I learn, what I focus. Um, yeah, uh, something, it's two things. You know, of course, sometimes in the temple, um, we say Shi Dao Yu Yi, it's a kind of a night priest. It's a kind of, no, ten priest, have a night priest, know how to heal him. It's also about the environment. Uh, the environment is most people always talking about the healing. Yeah, it's always talking about healing. Like uh, a priest, hey, hey, what are you doing? I said, oh, I'm nothing. Okay, come with me. We go to the mountain. What? Where, where we go to the mountain? Oh, go hiking. No, 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 no hiking. We got to gather the earth, uh, herbs. You know? Okay. Then you waste the priest. You go to the mountain. Then show you the herbs. Okay. What kind of this plant? How to healing? You know? What? What kind of this? Uh, how to healing people? How to use it? Yeah. So they always like talk. Then some other priests uh, together, oh, we know this like herbist, the next plant. They always talk about that. That's everybody. It's most priests in the temple. They know how to heal people. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So everybody was sort of learning everything from everyone. Everyone had a special. Yeah. Everyone was learning. Yes. Yeah. see in the temple. Yeah. So you ended up going through a period of what is called cloud wandering, where you traveled around to different temples. Could you talk about that a little bit? What was that like? Uh, I was still to uh, a wandering, being a wandering priest. I was being a wandering priest. Um, um, because you just live in the one temple, like uh, first year okay, it's good. Second year good. You know, every day, like you eating food, whatever how delicious food, if you eating all the time, you will feeling like boring. Yeah. So for me, it's the same. Each temple, I have a goal. Just to say, I live in Wudang. Like uh, after three years. You know, of course, not including the martial arts school. Then, around like six years, after six years, I just feel a little boring, but not like a boring, but a wood. <laughs> I want to, like, how to say, prove myself. Yeah. Always, I met a different master, like a priest from another temple, like chatting, talking, 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 a lot of something. I never know that. I never knew that. So, okay, I need to travel to go there. So they always talking about the same master from another temple. What kind of skill they're very, very good. You know, okay, I go travel to there. Um, it's the same. You go to the travel to another temple, you hear and uh, you want to learn something, you can find the what you want to learn. It's the same. Sometimes you can accidentally you can make it's a very, very high scale master, the priest. Then you can talk, you don't need to be a disabled or uh, that student, you just like to, oh, where are you from? Hey, hey, still to be a friend. Yeah. Then you talk about your idea. Oh, what do you do? Okay, you know, like a friend, and they talk, talk. Then they give you that opinion, that experience. It's like a very, very common in the Daoist temple. I, I want to say like 20 years ago, 30 years ago. I don't know, know what happened. And no, you know, I'm not, not in the temple. I was traveling a lot, a lot. Sometimes about money. It's like some temple is just like a very difficult life. A, uh, you have to work in there. Like a, what kind of work? Work for a farmer. They don't have any income. You have to help the temple, work for that. It's not have money. Like uh, um, they just give you a little bit. Like uh, either, uh, I want to say, I went to a one temple. 
uh, the salary is like around like two dollar each month. <laughs> two dollar each month. It's nothing. <laughs> Later, I went to traveling. You don't have any money. I have to ask the manager. Hey, I was traveling. I don't have money. Uh, can you borrow me some money? You know, say borrow is not read. Then you, you just want to that money for traveling. Continue traveling. Yeah. They say okay, no problem. You know, usually, if you're a good friend, not a like good friend, you nice. Usually, like. They borrow you this money, like a few hundred, uh, whatever say, like a like a few hundred Chinese money, uh, or like a hundred dollars or something like that, or fifty dollars. You can have this money to continue traveling. And and you did that for how long? Four years, something like that. Yes, over like a, almost three four years. After three years, four years, also a little bit tired about the traveling. In the temple, it's all same. You know, we just say it's all same. Um, in the temple, you know, all religion is, it's mm, the same, a lot of too much politics, you know, yeah. say, too much politics. Uh, then after that, you know what you want, you gather what you wanted to have. Then for me, so, okay, this is the time to do things by myself. Yeah. yeah. That's why I travel into like, uh, in Yunnan province, they have a very beautiful, we call the spring city. Um, they, you know, the all weather is very, very nice. I so said, also, there are a lot of people interested in what they do. It's most for foreign, foreign people. Um, it's okay. Then have a friend that have a house that let me stay there. And it's okay. You can do what you want. You know, we just like a kind of like a co-work, you know, we help each other. I will stay there. I hope that I take care of the house. Like kind of like a, no, kind of like that. I take care of the center. Then can make some time, uh, some money, uh, for even. Um, then yeah. So after about four years of that, you ended up coming to the United States. What year was that? Like ninety nine, nineteen ninety nine, or uh two thousand nine. Two thousand nine. I went. I, went oh. I come back. I, I come to. Uh, yeah, I came to. You uh. I, yeah, United States is a two two thousand nine. Uh, like before, a lot of people talking about that. Okay, uh, you should go to United States. You can make a lot of money. Or someone say, you know, you have to make a big wish to inherit it. You had it, the wood on earth. Someone like give you, you know, I said, no, that's not me. Uh, actually, I like China. Uh, because I'm different, you know, my personality, wherever, everywhere, I always have a lot of good friends. And as you're a student that like uh, study with me, it's life for me everywhere is very, very easy. Either in China, actually more easy for me. Yeah. Um, I, how to say, I didn't graduate, either I, I now have high, like, okay, high education, like a university or high school. Right. I didn't finish my I'm a military school. I just have, you know, I didn't, it's a very, very difficult for me to come to the United States. So you have to, you know, learn a new language. Everything is very, very difficult. I said, no, I don't want to go there. I stay chain. But after I met my first wife, yeah. I want to say first of all, my ex. Um, yeah. yeah, he really, really loved Chinese culture. And uh, she, she really loved Chinese culture. She's really interested in what I do. You know? Because, uh, how to say, a lot of people so respected this culture and the master of the Kung Fu. Then I met her uh, in Yunnan. And then we married, of course, we married. For me, you know, it's, it's the life. You need something like a difference. It's not always, oh, I want to be a priest. I want to be a model. It's not. It's for me, what's the immortal meaning? It's a long life or something. Um, during this time, I'm young, you know, I want to explore myself. Yeah. All over the world, I want to see the world, what happened. So either the marriage, everything is, you know, for me, it's new. I said, okay, have my wife. I said, it's good, you know, marriage and life, something different. Um, then I was married with my first wife. Then he got a Lyme disease. He come back visit. Uh, he live in Massachusetts. You know his parents all live in Massachusetts. Got a Lyme disease. Lyme disease. And we have, yeah, Lyme disease. And I have a kid. So yeah. thinking about the kid, I think about her. 
in China, they don't have this kind of trade, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. Don't have this treatment. So we have to come back to the United States. I said, okay, I saw everything. I give all my life from China. Okay, I just come to the United States. Yeah, that's why I'm coming to the United States. <laughs> uh, so for me, I'm really, I, I'm always talking to people. You have to join your life. Who are you? And for me, some say, how you did that? I said, you know, sometimes always a student or someone push me go here, then I'm here. And yeah. I said, the situation push me here. Right. I'm here. Yeah. So once you got here, you started to uh, teach martial arts and, and teach Taoism. Um, uh -huh. Was that difficult? What are, what are some of the obstacles? That, <laughs> what are some of the obstacles? Yes, that you absolutely. absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so, so very, very difficult for yeah. me. Uh, you know, I don't speak any English. Yeah. I just know I can say hello. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm lucky, you know, I always have a student who really like me. Um, what did I do? Like me, what did I do? And um, uh, my uh, I came to here first year. Of course, my ex is kind of like my translator. Wherever I'm go, everywhere, teach the workshop or teaching the class. My my wife, my ex, you know, he's always with me. And then after, uh, he find a job like you know, like have the Lyme disease is very very difficult. You can't have a normal job. Right. It's all very very difficult for her and everyone. Yeah, I then uh I have a company called a way where I may I may uh hope I may produce the yeah I may company. Yes, uh they hope me uh, produce the video. Uh then it's okay, we can do that. Is you know, we have a very good relationship with the master young, Dr. Young. Uh we he really you know, he also like uh, Wuda martial arts. Then he said, okay, can you, you can teach her here like uh, each week one time. Uh, I said, I said, it's okay. Like after maybe like uh, two months or three months, I forgot. Then it's okay. I went to open my only school. I try to independent something like that. Then I try to, you know, then the student introduce the Chinatown, how to, you know, work with other people. I still to do it. Uh, either, you know, of course, my ex-wife also uh, helped me uh, later, he got a job. Uh, also, uh, I went to try to independent, you know, always, um, you know, I still have some student hope. Uh, yeah, it, 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 I want to say it's really, really difficult. Yeah. In China, everything you can flow. The life is so easy. It come to here, everything, you know, always like, you know, the mind, everything. It's a, it's a stress, but for me, it's okay. I'm just like, do meditation. So whatever, I just do what I can do. I know my ability, you know, yeah. just like that. Yeah. So <clears throat> this was in Boston, right? Yes. When you when you started your first school, and and now you're in Francistown, New Hampshire, and then and you have your own retreat center now, Xuanju. Um, when when did you get the vision or the idea for Xuanju, and what is the idea behind your retreat center? What do you hope to achieve with that? Um. That's question. Um, yeah, that's good question. <laughs> um, I like. Uh, I want to say like before. I, I was. I was living in Boston. You know, half of some student from another country, and you were from another state. They went to learn the martial arts from me. Like they went to whatever the Xing Yi or Tai Jiu Kung Fu. We not say half a lot, half a same. It's very expensive. If you don't have enough money, it's so difficult, you know, have to pay me, have to pay the hotel, have to pay the food. Like, you know, some student that stay one week or 10 days, it's a lot, a lot of money yeah. for the student. Like, yeah. like one week you need least, you need like, a, I want to say 10 years ago, at least you need to spend like $2,000 yeah. and live in the hotel. Um, I said, okay, no, this is too expensive. I want to build a center or like a, a big house. If the student come to visit me, can stay with me. This is also a tradition. Mm -hmm. I think in China, all the tradition like, like that. Either in the countryside, we have the martial arts tradition also like that. We're not talking about the Kung Fu school. Either a traditional, the traditional martial arts master. So if someone practice martial arts, Kung Fu, whatever Xing Yi, Ba Gua, Tai Ji. Then, like a few days, you just come to visit a must, stay with must, practice there, hope that the must 
do something like uh, field work, work on a farm or whatever, do something. Yeah. yeah. Eat them together, practice together. Right. Some like uh, some sometimes you can just just stay like one month, two months, it's no problem. You know, some if you're too busy, you can okay come visit the master for like a couple of days, then go back. You know, come back, come back to your family or do what you you have to do. It's like a traditional culture. I always have that in my mind. You know, I said no, I I miss this part. Yeah. yeah. Also, you know, wood in the temple, no wood in the priest. Um, my life also, you know, uh, uh temple travel to temple. We always have the community, like a small community. We live together, eat together, eat together, talking together. Always, you know, miss this part. I said no. I want to build a center, like uh, what I have before. I want to build a center and an easy for student who want to practice with me or learn with me. That's why I have the goal. Of course, in the later, it's not a student who want to be a master, they want to be a teacher, they want to be a coach. You know, a lot, we have a lot of students who want to be a coach. It's so, okay, that's great, because if you want to be a coach, either you start to teach the student I can improve, can prove the earth what you learn because you still to think about the earth, you still to focus on the earth as also as a good for how to say for uh for wood on yeah. earth or like a good for um for the for me like a uh inherited you know good for preserve my, culture yeah yeah did, did, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's a really good environment. And, you know, like you said, it, it's a community. People come there and then they come back again and again. And and the people that they train with there, they re usually remain friends for life because it's this close bond training in that type of environment. It's a really good training environment. Uh, for me, I'm um, very happy about that. It's a lot of people come to the center, uh, stay like uh, one month or two months, few weeks. That totally changed. Yeah. Even the mind, you know, we are the center, like a community. A lot of people have a different idea. Whatever, sometimes, of course, the politics are more interesting things. A lot of people are talking about that. And either talking about the healing, talking about a lot of things. Or the lot of students, they have the only skill. Or they have the ability. They're all they talk about different things. I could blow the people's mind. Yeah. Have a lot of, how to say, just give them people a lot of new ideas yeah. in their lives. That's why I'm so happy about that. You know, I want not want to say change life. I want to say improve a lot of students, a lot of people's life in the center. Yeah. Um, we're of course someone want to come here. They, they have a goal. They don't know why they come to here. Sometimes people come to here. They just want to relax. And sometimes people ask me. Hey, what can you do and good for the society? What do I say? You don't need to do anything. You just know yourself to understand yourself as good for the society. What it means is not is a lot of people they don't know the ability. They just like worry too much stress. They just want to okay make money. They just want to do a lot of things. They know like a rich or they know the rich because the in, in, environment push people, give people too much stress. Mm. They come to the center, people to still talk. They stir with their thinking and the inspiration, everything. Then they stir to new their thoughts, stir to knowing their self. Okay, then, okay, what did I can do? What did I can't? Then they go back home, they just like totally changed. They just work hard or do something they can. Uh, everything different. Someone, okay, go home, let's start being a teacher, make a lot of friends. Uh, it's, it's, it's good for the society. Yeah, Let's, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, but I guess my next question, which you may have just answered it in part, but what, what do you think that Taoism and martial arts have to offer people in the 21st century that they may not be getting elsewhere? Uh, uh, it's, uh, you know, different... Um... Uh, how to say different people, different uh, ideas, different goals. Always, everything is always different. Different environment is uh, yeah. 
uh, for me, uh, I don't know another master. Uh, you know, someone say, okay, and the martial arts can change the human's life, can change the change the people's life. Uh, because we are actually, for me, as the people are different, uh, the uh, uh, environment different, the idea different, the personality different, everything different. It's not just martial arts can help people. Everything can help people. So for me, I've um, like went to practice martial arts. The good things, the least, can make they have a strong body, and make the have a, a confident. I can make people very confident, and make people uh how to say um another meaning I want to say is make people uh they understand they solve um and also of course like a tai chi qi gong that can make other people come and down mm -hmm. uh, there's no a lot of struggling. I saw uh, a lot of people say, hey, where the people come to Xuan Yu? And most of the a lot of girls and you know, ladies come to the school. Sometimes they're feeling so sad, they want to pray. It's not about uh, the environment because they come to here, then they're sinking down, you know, then they relax, still to relax. Then sometimes they're feeling, you know, the emotion come up. Yeah. In the city, the people, you know, it's the, the life is too struggling, too struggling. You know, it's a lot of pressure. Everyone just handle, hold everything in the body. They don't know everything. They just handle it. Then later the body, of course, will have an issue. They come to the center, then they start to relax. Then they start to, you know, emotion come out. It's everything, whatever man and the woman, if the emotion can come out, it's the good things, good for your health. If you hold everything, it's no good. I went to wherever martial arts, Xing Yi Qi Gong, if you like it, if you do it, the will improve your life. Also, of course, also good for the society, community, good for the community. Because if your body health, your brain health, your thinking health, everything health, you, you know, it's good for the environment. Yeah. Yeah, once you change yourself, it tends to have a ripple effect and change, change everything in your environment. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, Shifu, it's been great to see you and great to talk to you. Um, Dallas Gate is the name of your organization. Could you tell people where they could find you online? Oh, uh, yeah, they can follow our, you know, we have a lot of social media. They can, uh, like, DoisTheGate.com, or they can find, um, you know, DoisTheGate Center. We have, like, two different websites. Um, also, we, because I have too many things, <laughs> you know, one website too small. Um, maybe if you can manage it. Um, Okay, uh, also they can follow our like Facebook. We have Facebook, Instagram. Uh, if they find uh, like a Dice Center or internal earth, they will find uh, us. If you, you know, if someone really interesting, they want to come, we're always welcome for everyone. And I have to say from my own personal opinion, it's it's a well worth a visit. Um, it's, it's a wonderful environment to train in. So, thank you. <laughs>